Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics. Now today is going to be the dungeon Ice Reach from the Harrow Storm DLC. We're actually going to go in with the same setup as we usually use. Not necessarily the same people, but we do use one tank, one healer, one Magicka DPS and one Stamina DPS. Making sure that no roll is left out. So that you know you can still use that combination of uh, rolls inside all of the content. Including the hard modes as well, which of course we are going to demonstrate. Here we go. Now this dungeon does have some rather punishing mechanics shall we say but if you follow the mechanics you should be just fine you have to make sure that you're very clear with what you're doing here now the first pull is quite dangerous make sure your tank grabs the uh the atronach as soon as possible and it turns everything else around if they're stacked it helps if they're not don't panic but that atronach does need to be turned around away from the group and when it does this see this channeling effect that will continue and if you kill him obviously it will finish or he has to go through the motions and finish it during that phase if you are hit you're going to want some serious heals because it hurts like hell that is very relevant for the first boss, by the way, which, of course, will be coming up shortly. You must make sure you kill them as fast as you can, and if you can't kill them very quickly, keep your mitigation and your heals up. Now, there are a lot of standard trash packs, but some of these you may have seen before. They have a slightly different skin on them, of course. There are ice ones in here, whereas other dungeons you may have seen them in a different effect. But they do basically do the same kind of thing. You are going to see some mages that you have to interrupt and or stay out of their AoEs. The tank should really turn them all away from a group and stack them up as much as possible. And just your basic stuff, really. Keep on top of your um, interrupts and make sure that you do dodge the heavy attacks if you get caught short. Now... These bears and wolves and stuff, you do not want to get hit by as a DPS, but above all, your tank needs to grab that Atro and turn it away from everybody. The Ice Atronach you've seen already, kill it really fast, or outheal its phase. It's entirely up to you which one of the two you do, but they are very, very dangerous. You don't want to get hit by those as a DPS or a healer, because you will pretty much be one shot. The uh, the pulsing mechanic, however, it's like 25 to 30% of your health if you're a kind of 15 to 20k um, health bar. It's quite nasty. Now, this boss is very, very simple, although people do make a bit of a pig's ear of it. This boss has a lot of health. Now, the tank needs to grab this and turn it away from the group, but you'll see a mechanic here. You see that? That is teaching you something. Those Atronarchs will spawn in the fight, but if you can get the giant over to the Atronarch before it fully spawns, it will smash it. Now, as far as this fight goes, basically, you just keep him face away from the group and you burn him as fast as you can, or as slow as you are capable of, doesn't matter. There's no DPS race per se in this particular fight. But you must stay out of his frontal AoE and this Horfrost type effect will happen. You'll get a whirlwind on one player. As you can see now, I'm simply moving in a circle while maintaining my damage on the target and just keeping it away from everyone. Don't let it touch you. Now the boss just roared and feared everyone, which you have to break free from, and then it will enrage. As you can see now, the tank is kiting it around the room. If you get hit by him while you're enraged, even if you're a really meaty tank, nine times out of ten, you will actually die. So don't get hit. So just make sure you kite him around the room, try and keep him inside the damage if you can until the red has gone away and he goes back to normal, in which case you can just stack and burn again. Again, remember to stay out of his face because those AoEs you do need to try and avoid. They won't kill you in one hit, but they do hit pretty hard. The heavy attack is what you need to look out for as a tank. You can just stand out the way of it, but you really want to utilize it to kill the Atronarchs. As you can see, there's one in this corner here. If you bring him over and stand with your back to the Atronarch, the giant will hit it and kill it. There you go, one hit, bang, goodbye. However, if you don't kill it fast enough and it fully spawns, you will have to deal with it. You will have to actually fight it and you saw them outside of this room. Remember, I'll heal it or kill it. Just bear in mind, of course, if you're in a low damage group, you do want to 100% focus those Atronarchs if they do spawn fully. Otherwise, you will be overloaded with them because one will spawn, then another, then another, then another. Over a period of time, you could get overwhelmed with them. So make sure you focus those Atronarchs if your tank doesn't put the giant on top of it. So simple effects, basically. Stay out of his face. Kite the wind or hoarfrost or whatever you want to call it. Very similar to Cloudrest. And if he is enraged, stay away from him. As the tank, try and put him in a nice tight little circle so he stays inside the dots. It's a pretty simple fight, but if you make mistakes, obviously things can happen and it can go the other way. So just be very careful, be very clear of your mechanics and you should be just fine. This pull is pretty straightforward. Make sure that the tank grabs the big stuff and turns it away from the group. Make sure his DPS and healers, you do interrupt any of those enemies that try and channel um, effects. And 
mostly your AoE will do the work. You can focus on some of the harder stuff, especially if you come up against um, enemies that have lots of area of effect abilities, if you've got low DPS. Failing that, just keep your dots down and keep doing what you're doing. They will die eventually. There's no enrages or anything in any of the ad pools, you're just fine. Now, this pull is, again, quite straightforward. Put everything into the middle as the tank. As a DPS, stay out of stupid. Don't just stand in that stuff, it will kill you. And again, try to do as much damage as you can while avoiding the nasty mechanics. So if you are getting chased by something, this is very, very important, by the way. If you are getting chased, do not ever run away. Yes, you can block. Yes, you can dodge roll. Yes, you can move your feet a little bit. But do not run away. You will not lose aggro by running. The only way to lose aggro is for tank to get the taunt. If you are running away from the tank, it makes it more difficult for them to get it off you. So bring the enemy to the tank. That is incredibly important for a major mechanic in two boss fights, which are coming up shortly. One is actually the last one. Now... Again, a very simple pull. Stay out of the AoEs. The tank should be putting everything into the center as much as possible, and you just do what you do. You do damage, you heal, you survive. You don't need to run around the room like a headless chicken. Just relax. There are going to be some stressful mechanics in the last boss, but you are literally learning them right now. The key factor is do not run away from ads. If you have to survive, that's fine, but you don't have to run to Groutwood. Now, when it comes to... This particular corridor, a very false sense of security. It's kind of empty. There's lots of stuff going on on the walls, of course, if you're paying attention to the story, but it feels like there's nothing really here. So you start getting a little yolo -y. I've seen this in pugs, and people think that they can do that for the whole dungeon. The next area is not so quiet, so just bear that in mind. This is the only safe path. The rest of it is a mess. Now, this particular pull, you do want to put everything in again as a tank, but what the DPS should focus on is the two-hander. We got him down quite quickly. If you don't, he can start running around and heavy attacking people. Now, this boss is quite straightforward, although you can wipe to this quite easily if you're not paying attention. There are several ground-based effects that you've got to watch out for, and there's a very important mechanic that you must pay attention to, um, otherwise you're dead. You see these ice pops on the ground? Stay out of those. And when this spread and AoE bursts, each person has to be aware of their feet because there are kind of winds that go across the floor and they can do a significant amount of damage if you get caught in them so be very careful and avoid them when she does that spreading burst aoe now one of you will get set on fire as you can see i'm on fire now do not run through your group because you will kill them what you need to do is go over to the frozen strangler or the ice one and thaw it out by standing next to it then you can kill it if you don't it will continuously do damage to targets that it feels like hitting unless the tank has taunted it and it will kill them very very fast it hits incredibly hard so, once that's done, watch your feet. Stay out of the ice, stay out of the winds, and hit the boss. Any time that someone gets set on fire, they need to look for a strangler and go and thaw it out. Once it's done, kill it, move on again. Do not, I repeat, do not run through your group with that fire. You will kill people. While it's on you, you need small heals. While it hits somebody else, if it's not on them and it's actually carried by you, you will do a lot of damage to them. So be careful where you stand. Now, if there are no stranglers, and say for example, like here we're going for the burn at the end, if there's no stranglers whatsoever, you can of course cleanse this, but I wouldn't recommend doing that right now. That's more important for the last boss. For the most part, in this fight, avoid cleansers and purges, just do the mechanics. This is the part where Lyris comes out and just decks someone. Goodbye. Excellent. She does that throughout the dungeon. She's always fighting somebody and showing how you are feeling like you're doing some work, but she's just wrecking everyone anyway. She could probably do the dungeon herself. Now, this is the part I told you to be careful of. This corridor is not safe. As soon as you come in here, you've got loads of zombies and they explode. Now, if you can get your tank to hold them quite still, you can avoid some of the explosions by staying back. But every corner is dangerous. They will literally flood you. And as a DPS or a healer, if you don't have your mitigation effects up or some heals or something like that going on, you can actually take a one shot, maybe even two, if you are unlucky. Remember earlier I said that corridor that gives you the false sense of security? This is why, because people think the first corridor was safe, oh, so they can just run through this one. No, don't do that. When you get to the end of the corridor, of course, we've got some standard enemies. You do have to get these down as and when you can, but just make sure you interrupt them if they're channeling anything, because it gets really annoying if you don't. Now, be very careful, because this is the, the no-death wiper, this one. Because when people try and go for no-death runs, they get a little bit yolo -y and they run around this corner and go boom. This is the kill spot. This is where people die. Do not run ahead of your tank. Now, for the rest of it, it's not too bad. Most of the ad pulls are pretty standard. You've seen most of them already, um, although there's going to be some different ones when we get outside. 
make sure you focus the two-hander, make sure you interrupt the casters, make sure you keep your feet out of stupid, and as a tank, please maintain your taunts and hold stuff together. This boss is going to teach you a lesson for hard mode. So be very aware of your surroundings, pay attention to these mechanics, memorize them, do not try to go for the full nuke if you haven't seen these mechanics before because they are going to teach you stuff. If you already know what you're doing, however, go nuts, it's up to you. Now, this boss needs to be turned around at all times. Do not let him face the group. In the meantime, you can see platforms on the ground or runes, if you like. Enemies are going to come out of those. And remember I told you earlier, do not run away from ads. This is why. See that skeleton over there on the healer? It's connected to him. So, we have to kill it, of course, but it will not allow a taunt. If you chain it or pin it up, that works, but you cannot taunt it. So the person who is aggroed needs to be the one that brings it to the tank. That's very important for later on. As you can see, we've got zombies coming out, we've got wraiths, They're all different types of enemies pop out of these runes. Just make sure you kill them. DPS should be focusing them rather than the boss if you can. In the meantime, you've got some other mechanics obviously going on. You've got AoEs on the ground that you must avoid. You've got these skeletons that you have to bring close to the tank, or at least close to the group. And when the health goes low, of course, as you saw there, 50% and under, we have these spinning whirlwinds of, of death and fire. Just try to avoid them. They're random, they'll spin around the room, and they'll try and take out the group. Just try to watch your feet, and once they're gone, you'll be fine. The rest of the time, you do have some nasty fire effects on the ground that you have to avoid, and the tank must make sure they block the heavy attack that they are receiving, otherwise they will die. So the basics to this one is keep it turned away from the group, and block the heavy attacks. Watch your feet because you get a nasty circle under, under your feet and that'll hurt as well. DPS and healers. Watch the AoEs. Don't get caught in fire. And kill the adds. Above all, you must kill the adds. If it's a skeleton that's attached to you, bring it close to wherever the boss fight is so the tank can pin it and you can deal with it. All of that is relevant for the last boss. In fact, everything you've seen so far is relevant for the last boss if you're going to do hard mode. If you're not, it's not quite so stressful. Now, this is where you're going to see a few newer enemies. Nothing major on the surface. It just looks like some standard casters, two-handers, maybe some archers. But watch out for the, the budgies, basically. See these birds, these harpies? They are in other content. They are in Scale Caller. They're in a few different locations around the world. But they are always quite squishy. This is another false sense of security. You've been used to those being really easy to deal with. Now they have the same amount of health as every other enemy, but they can also enrage and hit very, very hard. So your primary focus in these ad pulls is to make sure, above all, apart from obviously interrupting and making sure your tank puts everything together, you do kill those birds. The harpies must die. I've seen lots of people try to kind of YOLO into these um, ad pulls, thinking they can survive. If you're very experienced, you might be able to if you can avoid mechanics by uh, staying out of stupid. But most people run in thinking it's safe and they do actually end up dead on these tiny tiny ad pulls so if you are going for no deaths take your time make sure your resistances are up and make sure you do focus on those harpies now this pull is probably one of the harder ones it does have a lot of harpies in it the tank needs to turn them all away pull them all in chain them up and maintain taunts on them because if they start zapping the group you're in real trouble this is where I'd probably use your ultimates if you've saved them up or if you have any to use at the moment because you don't want to be in this room very long. Especially if any of those harpies get loose and start zapping the group. They enrage, you're in real trouble. Now we're coming up to another boss right here. This is also a bit of a pug killer and also a no death killer because people tend to panic too much and don't necessarily pay attention to the mechanics. There are some very clear ones and some not so clear ones. Now, what you want to do as a tank is try to hold him in the center of the room as much as possible. But the DPS and the healers, you want him to stay close, but don't stand completely still. This is a bit of a mobile fight, regardless of it being also a kind of stack and burn, which is a bit weird. So, while doing damage, obviously, do as much as you can. Make sure that you get the boss down and watch your feet, because these pops here... They will really, really hurt. They're lightning splashes from the sky. If they zap you, you will lose a significant amount of health. Now, the ice mechanic that you saw there, that will pin you to the ground. You have to dodge roll to get out of it. Pretty standard stuff so far. Then, around the room, there will be Atronarchs that spawn, which you will have to kill. And when he jumps, you need to stay out of the AoEs and block if you're the tank or block if you're the DPS if you're not quite sure where he's going to land. There are visuals to show where he's going to land, so don't stand in it. But if you do get caught and you block, you will be fine. If you get caught and you don't block, you will be dead. 
Now, you've got some Atronachs in at 50% or so. Make sure you kill them quickly. Dodge roll out of the ice if you get pinned. Do not stand near that ice pillar because it hurts. Again, the lightning will continuously go through the fight. You have to just make sure you move your feet. Each pop will take a rather large amount of health off you. And if you get caught more than a couple of times, you're generally dead. If you're a DPS or a healer. We've got another wave of Atronarchs here around the 40% mark. Make sure you kill them. Otherwise, they will do a lot of damage. Yes, there are achievements for that, but we won't go into those today. He will uh, kind of buff up the boss, if you like, and just do a stupid amount of damage in every effect. Now, low health, he will kind of channel loads of ice and nastiness in the air and you have to make sure that you kind of go through the mechanics as fast as you can to make sure that you get him down now if you survive this and he's still alive after he's finished you're fine just make sure you keep doing what you're doing it will eventually end but if you have a stupid amount of damage you can actually burn through this before he's finished as you can see there we killed him before he'd finished channeling but if you've got lower dps don't panic if he stops doing what he's doing you survived it's fine just carry on with the basics. It's not that bad if you pa if you don't panic. What people tend to do is they forget about the Atronarchs and he gets too powerful and everybody dies. Kill the Atros, keep your ultimates for that phase and basically finish him off. Newer groups, especially Pugs or anything like that, I would recommend using your defensive ultimates at that phase because the longer you can survive, obviously the more likely it is he's just gonna finish his mechanics and you can just fight him in his standard form. It's entirely up to you, however. These pulls, remember, be careful, interrupt the mages, and of course, make sure that you prioritize the ice guys because they hit really, really hard. Your tank, again, should be stacking those together and turning them away from the group. If you're that DPS that likes to stand beside the tank and kind of hold hands looking at the same enemy, you're going to get punched because the tank stands where the teeth are. Don't stand where the teeth are if you're a DPS. Stay behind the enemy and kill them. You've seen these pulls before. Kill the harpies, interrupt the mages. Always kill the two-hander as well if you can get him down quick enough because he does have some nasty attacks. Almost there. Now, this last boss, off hard mode, is very, very straightforward. On hard mode, has all the mechanics that you should have been paying attention to throughout the dungeon. So this is where the uh, did you pay attention part really comes up. So we're going to have four witches and they will be in four different corners of the room. You will only be able to attack one at a time because they have damage shields on them and you can't burn through them. So, you have to kill one and then it will get covered in damage shield and then you move on to the next. In order, we go from one to four, from left to right. The first one spawns the giant. We now have to kill the giant while watching our feet because we have the lightning effect from the boss we just fought. And we also have the ice effect from the giant and you will also have the flame effect from the stranglers. So, while maintaining a taunt on that giant and the witch, you must, of course, make sure that you don't get punched by the giant as the tank, because remember the enrage mechanic. As DPSs, you have to make sure, of course, that you kill the witch, eventually. Make sure you don't put the fire on the group. Make sure you don't stand in the swirl and ice wind, the hoarfrost. And be sure that if you do get a skeleton on you, you bring it close to the boss or to the tank so it can be somewhat controlled. As you can see out there, uh, Vic has a skeleton on him. So what we've asked him to do is either basically kill it or bring it into the group. What you decide to do is entirely up to you. Number two. Number two, which has stranglers. So the first boss has the giant, second boss has the stranglers. So what you need to do is make sure that you take the fire, thaw out the strangler, and kill it. The rest of the mechanics are still there. You've got the lightning coming down. You've got the witch hitting people, which means it hurts, by the way, if you drop the taunt, so don't do that. What you need to do is make sure whoever's got the fire looks for the stranglers and goes and thaws them out. Generally, there's usually two per phase, but just keep your eyes peeled. Kill the skeletons, watch the lightning, kill the stranglers. Now, this is very important. Witch number two, this one, is the only time you'll get stranglers. So the rest of the time, if someone's got fire on them, you can cleanse it. Do not run through your group with it. Just cleanse it off. Now, number three brings out the wraiths and the ghosts and the zombies and all that good stuff. The exploding zombies that we all hate. So, you have to maintain your survival, you have to watch your feet, you have to kill witch number three, and you have to kill zombies, skeletons, and wraiths. What I would recommend you do is focus the adds until they are all dead, then come back to the boss. If you get fire on you, this is witch number three. There are no stranglers, so you can cleanse it. You do have to watch out for the hoarfrost though, so make sure that if it's on you, you maintain your damage, heals, or taunts, whichever you're doing, and try not to stay in it for too long. The whole time you're basically moving around in a circle to watch your feet. Don't stack whatever you do because if you do, you're going to die. Now, remember, 
you must kill the adds, they are priority. So do take them out as soon as possible. You can focus the witch afterwards, there's no rush. Make sure you deal with the difficult stuff. Now, as you can see, we are on number four right now. We do have the flames, which we can have cleansed. We do have the lightning, which we need to avoid. We do have the wind that we need to avoid. We do have skeletons that we need to deal with. And we've also got the previous boss, basically, the, the berserking warrior type dude that keeps jumping and landing on top of the tank or whoever it feels like. You must deal with him. He's number four's mechanics. So remember in this order, one is the giant, two is the stranglers, three is the wraiths, four is that warrior dude. Make sure you kill that ice reach warrior, otherwise you are in trouble. You do not want these mechanics to overlap. So get off the boss, focus that guy down, and then kill the witch. Now, once number four is dead, your phases will go into randomness. So it doesn't go in order anymore. It goes one, two, three, four. Then every single one of them will shield up and you will have to interrupt them. As you can see here, everyone goes out and interrupts one each. Deal with the ads, remember, do not leave these out in the open. Now, number three has been exposed. So it could have been any of them, but we know what to do. Kill the wraiths, kill the zombies, kill the skeletons, then kill the boss. Watch your feet. You can take as much time as you like here. It's not a race. Just make sure you kill those ads. Number three doesn't have stranglers. So what can we do? We can cleanse that fire. So instead of running around like a headless chicken looking for stranglers, you can actually just purge it or cleanse it or whatever. Purify it even. It's safe. Do not try and purify fire when whatever boss you're on is very low health because you could overlap mechanics. You may end up with a strangler on the next phase and you just dumped your fire and you don't have it for long enough, which means you've got the ice ones in the room and they will nuke you. So be very, very careful of that. Your main focus at all times is these interrupts once one of the witches is down and the adds. Now we've got number one. So deal with the remaining adds. Number one is the same mechanic as it started with. That's a giant. One is giant, two is stranglers, three is ghosts, four is the, uh, the ice reach warrior. So again, DPS, kill the adds. Healers, pay attention. Tank, make sure you maintain a taunt on the witch and the giant. Your main focus here has to be that giant. You do not want him in the room on the next boss. You do not want the next random one to have the giant here as well. So make sure you focus it. As a tank, you should know what you're doing here. Make sure you keep that boss away from your face and from the group's face if you can help it. But try to kind of circle it around the number one boss in that way. All the damage can be evenly spread out if you've got AoEs on the ground. You can use your ultimates here. I would recommend it, in fact, just for the giant itself. But after the giant is dead, I would highly recommend saving your ultimates for the execute phase because you are going to want some defensive ultimates for that and some offensive ones as well. Execute isn't too stressful, especially if you've got a decent amount of damage. But if you don't have much, you are going to want to defend yourselves. Interrupt once the boss is down. Every single time one of them goes down, you have to interrupt the four corners. As you can see, we've overlapped, which is tricky. The, the giant has enraged and now we have to deal with it in an enraged state at the same time as dealing with these stranglers. You can pre-dot the stranglers if they don't have fire on them yet and then they will start taking damage once they're thawed out. But at the end of the day, the most important thing to do here is make sure that you do not run through the group of the fire and make sure that you do kill the stranglers as soon as possible. The tank can taunt them, but if they start pepper and DPS with shots, you're in trouble. As you can see there, our healer got shot by a strangler. so. Tanks, be very quick on getting those taunts up and healers or DPS, make sure you're blocking if you get hit by one because otherwise you are dead. You can dodge roll them as well, of course. Now, remember, number two, you do want to keep that fire. You've got to have that mechanic intact. You do want to make sure that you do not cleanse it on number two. Boss two, no cleansers. Make sure you get that in the head of your group members, otherwise you are gonna get in trouble. The fire is a plus, not a minus on this phase. As you can see, we've got some more stranglers. They're being thawed out. Don't stand next to the fire, of course, but make sure you get the stranglers down as fast as you can. Someone may need to call these out because not everyone can see them. There is a lot of stuff going on. Primary focus, again, is the same as lots and lots of mechanics in the game. Most people think that the boss fight is all about the boss. Remember, interrupts once the boss goes down. It's not. The mechanics tend to be all about the ads because if you don't manage them, you're stuffed. Now we've got number four randomly. Remember what number four is? Number four is the Ice Reach Warrior. So now your primary focus is to deal with him while passively damaging the boss. Try not to go too nuts on the boss and you are gonna to wanna to save your ultimates for this. When that witch dies, the health of the overall boss is gonna go down to 20%. So every single kill is like 10. 
And when that does happen, you're going to go into execute. Execute is going to be stressful. So save your ultimates. Save your defensive and save your offensive. You need to get into the middle of the room when this happens as fast as possible in a nice, neat circle around the boss. As you can see here, in the middle of the room, watch out for the Horfrost because you still have to deal with that. This is where you want to drop everything. Try to not overlap the fire on the group. Try to not overlap the ice on the group or the wind. And stay in the heals and the damage mitigation if you've got that kind of stuff going on. Watch for the lightning because it's still coming. It's, it's basically straightforward. Kill it. There's nothing else you can do there apart from watch your feet and kill the boss. Just make sure your buffs and bonuses are running because otherwise you will get hit very, very hard. If you don't kill her quick enough, over time you will eventually take more damage and die. So in a nutshell, number one, giant, kill it. Number two, stranglers, kill them with fire. Number three, wraiths, zombies, all that horrible stuff. And number four is the ice reach warrior. Always focus the primary mechanic of each boss before pushing the boss and never cleanse when boss two is alive. When boss 2 is shielded, you can cleanse all you like. One more thing to remember, of course, is that every single time one of those witches goes down and gets covered by a bubble, you will have to interrupt all four corners of the room. So split up, interrupt one each, then carry on as you were, figure out which random witch is your next target. So, hopefully that helped, hopefully that wasn't too boring, hopefully you now understand the mechanics of this particular dungeon, especially the hard mode. Just bear in mind, of course, the hard mode is a little bit frantic, there's a lot going on, but the non-hard mode doesn't have any of the, uh, the one to four mechanics. You just basically have to kill the witches and watch your feet. So, first of all, thank you very much for watching, I hugely appreciate the support. If you're not subscribing already, please do hit that button, it is free. Furthermore, if you want to help, of course, support outside the channel, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website, zynodegaming.com, where all the written guides are, including this one. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.